Hey everyone, I am David Zapransky, your host for Financial Revelations, coming to you from our new podcast studio in the office complex. We're expanding, so I got kicked out of my old studio. I, I thought I was the boss. Um, hey, you can hear me every Thursday morning on WCRF 103.3 in Cleveland or the Moody Radio app. Moody Radio app is on all your phone app, computer app sources. It's a great, easy source. You can listen anywhere in the world. In fact, we have people that listen to us all over the world. Now, I'm not asking you to vacation just to listen to us, but just to point out that you could listen to us anywhere in the world. You could email us questions, Corey at epsf.com. And of course, you could always call here. You could, uh, I can't guarantee that you're going to get to talk to me right away, but uh, you'll get to talk to Corey or Melissa or Josh or who knows who's going to be here answering phones. So that is 1-800-344-2534. You know, we manage money for a living. We do um, financial planning and things of that nature, but generally we manage money. I got these new purple chairs and I uh, unwittingly wore a purple shirt. So hopefully you can tell when my shirt stops and the chairs begin. I don't think I love the chairs, but um, anyway. If you want to know more about our mission strips, you could go to nativosusa.org. Uh, as soon as Melissa gets back from vacation, we're going to update the website, put some video on it. Had a great well dig. We're going again next year in March. If you want to be part of that, let me know. You can also give money to it from nativosusa.org. So if you want to support somebody's trip, you could do that if it's in your giving plan. So today I want to talk about uh, some market stuff and and politics is in the news. It has been the most extraordinary four weeks of politics in my lifetime. And I'm 45-ish, so that's a long time. So some market stuff and some politics. Let's talk market first because I just walked away from my screen where after opening up significantly lower, uh, the NASDAQ and the other markets had done a miraculous turnaround and they're all in the green. And most of the things that I've been buying over the last couple of days and week uh, were back in the green also. So the market, especially the technology market, is really taking it in the shorts right now. It's like just a kick right in the shorts. And this week has been particularly bad. And, and people will ask me, what do I do when the market, especially the broad market, you know, if you, if you get one company down, for instance, Southwest reported today. They're, Southwest is really a horribly run airline right now. They're really struggling to, to make money. In fact, they're not making money. And so they got hit particularly hard. CrowdStrike got partic hit particularly hard because of the internet out outage last week. But what if everything is down? What do I do? And, and what should you do when the market is down in a broad sense? So it's not just one company. It's the market. Tech market is getting kicked. What do you do? Well, generally, and, and, and when I say generally, you know, I, I got to be careful because I'm not making a recommendation for your personal portfolio right now. I'm telling you what I do. I look for, in general, I look for the very best companies that I know of, that I follow. And not everybody thinks that I know the best company. So some people... I'll look at a company and I'll say, well, I don't like that company, but I do love it. I remember one time, it was uh, after 2008, might have been 2009, and I was buying a ton of Bank of America. And somebody from our compliance department called me and said, hey, we've noticed you bought uh, a lot of shares of Bank of America. We're talking you know, a couple hundred thousand at the time. Why are you doing that? And I said, because I think it's going up in value. And they said, okay, thanks, we're just checking. And they hung up. <laughs> so... Not everybody thinks like I think. I do my own research. I read a lot of research. I don't uh, generally, I don't just buy a stock because it feels right. I, I don't generally do that. I bought stocks because I've read research on them. I bought stocks because I followed them. I bought stocks because they're getting taken over by a venture capital firm that I know, like, and trust. I bought stocks because I love that marketplace and they happen to be either undervalued or underappreciated for whatever reason. But I don't just wake up one morning and throw a dart at the stock page and say, well, that's my stock today. So I don't think you should do that either. I don't buy stocks that my brother-in-law tells me about. Why? Well, because I know my brother-in-law. I buy stocks that I think are going to go up in value. 
and we're long-term buyers. We don't buy stocks for a day because generally we have to be tax efficient for people. So if you're buying a stock and it goes up 10% and you sell it within a year, you're going to pay income tax on that gain. I want to pay long-term capital gains, which if you're under around $600,000 of adjusted gross, your, your capital gains is 15%. Your income tax, your effective rate, might be in the 20s. So I'm going to save you roughly 50% on tax just to hold that stock or that investment for a year. So I generally look for the companies that I love the most, that I like the most, that I think are market leaders, and I add to my position. That's what I did these last couple of weeks when the market was getting beat up so bad. Now, I did add a new position in uh, to portfolios to some of our more aggressive investors. I added CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike is a company that I followed for a long time and I didn't want to buy it because it was too expensive. Well, they sent out a patch for software and they cured that problem because they're off a hundred bucks a share. So we added some to some portfolios. I think it's an aggressive buy right now. It's not the most aggressive thing that you could do. They're a big company. They're not going anywhere. And you could also add to your mutual fund positions, your ETF positions. Uh, when the broad market's down, now if one stock is down, like Southwest or Tesla the other day because they missed their number. I don't, you know, I, I haven't added to Tesla in a while. And I don't like airlines. In fact, I'm out of airlines now because generally they hand you your head back to you in a basket at some point in time. They're just, there's so many things that they can't control. And, you know, I, I was listening to the CEO or the, the president, I think he's the CEO of uh, Southwest Airlines this morning. And they're flying record numbers of people. TSA cleared a record number of people a couple of weeks ago on a holiday weekend of 3 million people. And they cannot make money. They say, well, we have too much capacity. They, we haven't had this many people check through TSA mm, ever. And they can't make money. So what are they going to have to do to make money? They're going to, Southwest is going away from, I can't believe this because people love this about Southwest, but there's no assigned seating on Southwest. Well, they're going to go, they're moving away from that. And the reason they're moving away from that is because if you fly three times a year, you're not profitable for Southwest or any airline. If you fly three times a month, like I do, that's the flyer they want. And so they want to have premium seats. They want to have assigned seats. They want to have seats with more leg room. They want to have power at the seat so you can charge your laptop, your phone, or whatever. And they want to have Wi-Fi on the planes, too. Uh, there's about a 1,000 airplanes right now with Starlink on them. They have a contract for another 1,000 planes. You're going to get 200 megabyte download speed when you're on a plane going 500 miles an hour with Starlink. I just bought Starlink Mini. It hasn't showed up yet. I know I have a regular Starlink at my house that I left. I took and left the Starlink uh, in the Amazon, and I'm going to take the Starlink with me uh, to the Amazon when I go just to see how it works, see how it performs, to do a little beta testing for it. So I'm kind of excited. I love Starlink. Starlink is a company where if they ever break it off from um, the, the private company that it's in right now, I'm going to buy it. If, you, if you're with me getting money managed here, you're going to own it if it fits into your portfolio, of course. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about real briefly and touch on, because the GDP numbers came out this morning for the second quarter, so for last quarter, 2.8%, it's smoke and mirrors. It's not real. The government is spending so much money. If we had a good economy and they were spending this much money, the GDP would be 6%, but it's 28 most of the new jobs are government jobs. That's the, You do not want to see that. That's a horrible thing to see in a jobs report. Most of the new private jobs are part-time. You don't want to see that. You want to see new full-time jobs. Most of the jobs that the Biden administration created were just jobs that came back from the pandemic. They, they really haven't done a good job in the, in the private sector. They've done a great job in the public sector because they've been spending so much money. And by the way, the Republicans have to be complicit in that because they control the purse strings in Congress. So don't get lulled into a uh, sense of security with this market. I think we're going into a slowdown. Is it recessionary in nature? I don't know. It, it could be. It might be. I, You know, we have six months before a new administration comes in. I think we'll know a lot by the time that happens. And if there is a slowdown, I think it will happen in those six months. So if you're looking at the market, don't. <laughs> don't sell out yet, okay? It, the end is not near. I think we're in what we call a secular bull market, and I think we'll we'll come out of this 
uh, this market downturn that we're in right now, and we're going to head to the upside, especially when Donald Trump gets elected, because I think the market's going to be very accepting and appreciative of a uh, Trump presidency because it's friendly to the markets, and it should be. That's how you grow an economy. Look, <clears throat> when when rich people get richer, everybody gets richer. They, it's not a zero sum game. So when the CEO of a company makes more money. Generally, jobs are expanding, the company's expanding, raises are had, everybody does well. It's, it's not, we don't need to live in this identity politics of rich versus everybody else. That's okay if we have rich people. There's, even Jesus said there's always going to be poor among us, okay? So the idea that uh, a free market in, in, a, in a world where you could be anything, be a free market capitalist, it is the kindest thing that you could do because it lifts people out of poverty. It gives them a chance to succeed. This is the only place you could do that. You can't do what we do here anywhere else. And the reason why I know that because I go other places and I see it. We opened up a business in Brazil. We, I've seen firsthand what the government does to businesses in Brazil. They make it very, very difficult. And consequently, people don't hire people. So it doesn't work. It, there's three things every kid needs to hear. I believe in you, I love you, and socialism will never work. Those are the three things. So let's talk a little bit about politics, because since we talked last, Kamala Harris was uh, kind of coronated the presidential contender for the Democrats. Of course, these are the people who say that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. Well, they took the, the candidate that they had that people kind of voted for. They even rigged their own elections, and they rigged another election. So they're... Three for three now. They rigged 2020. They rigged Joe Biden. They rigged Kamala Harris. It happened very, very fast. It happened very fast. They don't even have their convention until August. They didn't need to do it that fast. I think the thought pattern for them was, we have so much turmoil, we need to bring certainty someplace. And so they brought certainty to who their contender was. Uh, I think the Democrats are going to regret, regret their choice. She's kind of a lightweight. Now... When Joe Biden was running, he said, I'm going to pick a black female for my vice president. So everybody else was excluded. Now, what do I, I don't like that. I, I think if the most qualified person is a black female, that's who it should be. And if the most qualified person is somebody else, that's who it should be. We live in what we used to call a meritocracy, where you succeeded based on merit. And that's not really what the Democrats believe right now. Just look at their Supreme Court choice, who said the First Amendment gets in the way of the government. Yes, that was the goal of the First Amendment. This is a Supreme Court justice. We're in trouble. Um, I think there's way more qualified people from the Democratic side than Kamala Harris. She was not a vetted politician in California. She was not really a vetted vice presidential choice. She was a DEI hire is what she is. She never even got a vote, one vote in their primary. She dropped out before Iowa because she's so unlikable. Uh, and what does she bring? She brings every problem that Joe Biden had, the, the economy, the border, the wars that we have because of weakness, all of that plus one other thing. So she owns all of that plus one. And the plus one is she hit his illness. She was one of the people who knew how sick he was. And, and I, I watched his address last night. And I, look, I don't want to see anything bad happen to anybody. But it's hard to look at what has happened to Joe Biden and not think this is almost cruel what's happening. So she hid the condition. Um, you know who hasn't endorsed Kamala Harris yet? Uh, wait for it. Wait for it. Uh, Barack Obama. So a lot of people raced into endorser. She's going to be the candidate. I think they're going to regret it. I think it's a problem for them. And quite honestly, I don't think they could have picked somebody else better for Donald J. Trump because they wanted to run against this particular record. If you get somebody who wasn't part of the administration, you can't run against the record because they don't have the record. And I think that was a miscalculation on their part to go so quickly and jump so fast to Kamala Harris, who never got one primary vote. She never won one delegate, rather. She got primary votes. She never won one delegate in the primaries. And she owns the record. She was the border czar. The border is the number two issue in the election. Number one is the economy and inflation. 
which she also owned. So you're going to beat her up on all of that stuff. And then you're going to beat her up, too, on the fact that she knew Joe Biden was sick and they hit it. That is, this is way bigger than Watergate. This is way bigger than Watergate. It's, it's way bigger than Watergate starting in 2020 or 2016 when Donald Trump came down the escalator and they were talking about the Russian collusion story. You know, they wiretapped him. They tapped his... They, they were listening in on conversations, reading emails, text messages, and everything. In Watergate, four or five people broke into the Democratic headquarters and put a listening device in there. It caused our president to have to resign. This is way bigger than that. We have a president that... I, I don't know how you feel, but if you watch the debate, can he... Is he qualified to do the job? He's going to be president for six more months. So way bigger than Watergate. The markets are going to love a Donald Trump presidency. Look for broad market pullbacks. Buy the best of the best. Everything was on sale. I am David Safransky coming from New Digs. A real American. A true red-blooded patriot. And the voice you can trust.